Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at my top five data engineering trends for 2022. These are some random trends that I've picked off the internet. These are things that I see developing in real time in my position as a data engineer, working primarily within the AWS tech stack. So with that being said, let's get off. Trend number one, that's the move from batch processing to real time streaming. Okay, so this is nothing new. This is a trend that's been going for maybe the last five years. It started with maybe triggers on traditional database systems pushing data in real time to downstream repositories. But as the need for real time data has grown, the technology to allow us to stream data in real time has met that demand. Kafka is the biggest leader in this space, but just as the demand has grown over the last five years, so is the solutions around real time streaming. Each of the three major cloud providers, GCP, AWS, and Azure, all now have their own managed version of real-time streaming. AWS has AWS Kinesis, GCP has GCP Dataflow, and Azure has Stream Analytics. And this push towards a managed service lowers the barrier to entry for people wanting to implement streaming in their technology stack. What used to be very costly and expensive to maintain can now be abstracted away from the end user and data engineers like myself can just get on with actually sending the messages in real time. Number two, the move from data lakes to data lake houses. So data lakes, as you know, on this channel is something that's very close to my heart. It's a piece of technology that I implement all the time in my work as a data engineer. I build them through the infrastructure and then I also implement the ETL processes as well. And as data lakes have started to take off in the industry, the demand on what they can actually do has also started to grow. Data lakes originally were there to solve the problem of when you have lots of data, but you don't need as much compute all the time on demand. So you see the separation of data and compute, and that allows us to store vast amounts of data and then analyze that at our on-demand scale. And we can run things like data clusters or serverless services like AWS Athena on top of our data that's held in a file system. Now, as the demand for data lakes has grown, so has the demand on the capabilities of what they can do. So for example, data lakes are not that efficient at actually performing inserts and deletes on data that already exists. However, this is becoming an increasing demand from people as they want to replace their data warehouses with data lakes. And that's where the name data lake house comes from. We're now looking at a data warehouse, but in lake form. So in order to actually meet these kind of new demands, such as the upsets, inserts, deletes, and the versioning of data, technologies such as Hootie or Govern Tables in AWS have been implemented in the last year or so. This allows real-time insert and deletes and acid properties applied on the data. So we're getting that data warehouse functionality, but in a data lake. Of course, this technology space is only going to grow over the next year. And as more companies move their data lakes to data lake houses or bring their data warehouses down into the data lake house, the technology will only get better. And that's why I see it as a leading trend for 2022. Number three, self-service analytics. So this is something that has been going on in the industry for the last five years. Different teams want to implement their own analytics, but they want this on a self-service basis. Normally we'd have something like a BI, a business intelligence developer sitting in a team. Requirements would come in and they would develop dashboards or maybe the odd ML algorithm. However, as more people get computer literate inside companies, inside the businesses, they actually want to perform their own analytics. And to solve this problem, a lot of companies are starting to implement, and I've saw this in several I've worked with recently, a self-service analytics platform. This is where data engineers bring in the data, cleanse the data, and present the data to all teams in a single place of truth. Those teams then have freedom to place their own tech stacks on top of that data and produce any sort of analytics that they want. So the data science team can start doing ML algorithms, while the finance team can build their finance reports and they're all operating off that single source of truth. This allows businesses to scale greater because you don't have a bottleneck of a BI team. That's not to say the BI team is redundant in any way. They still will be doing reports, especially things that are actually common among the business. But in general, what I've saw in the industry is the trend heading towards that self-service analytics platform. The move from on-premise infrastructure to cloud infrastructure. Okay, so this is coming as absolutely no surprise to anyone. A lot of the companies I've worked with in the last two years have all been doing data migrations from on-premise to the cloud. And this is for numerous reasons. 
but mainly they want to take advantage of the tech stacks up in the cloud without having to pay for the infrastructure themselves. It means that you can adopt and move quickly without the overhead or the capital expenditure on the infrastructure. The actual adoption rate is a bit varied. I'll put up some graphs now. So some places are suggesting that as high as 80% or over of all listed companies are now in the cloud. And I found other statistics that suggest that at least 50% of all data held by public listed companies in America is cloud based. That's a lot of data. And realistically now, because we can actually access this data with a plethora of tools available to us in the cloud, the demand for data engineers is growing. Just look at a job website, type in data engineer, and you'll see that they want the cloud skills. They want that ability for a data engineer to go in and start interrogating, moving, and transforming that data so business insights can be derived and add value. And number five, multi-cloud adoption. So the last three companies I've been at have not been in one cloud. They have been in at least two and some have been in three. The leaders in the space as we know are AWS, GCP and Azure. And the reason for this is that there's different courses for different courses in the opinion of some of these leaders of these companies. And what I've seen and what was a direct quote to me is that some people believe AWS is great for giving you the building blocks to build anything you want but GCP have more managed services. So if you just want to get in like BigQuery and start analyzing your data through querying, then you have BigQuery. But if you want to use something that's a bit more bespoke, then this director of the company was telling me he believed AWS was the way to go. I don't personally see it quite as clear cut as that. I think you can do as much or as little as you want with some of these services. And AWS is definitely catching up on that more managed service space. But what is true and what will hold true is that companies are no longer afraid to go to the cloud. And once they're, they're not afraid to actually expand into different cloud providers to meet the different demands that they have. And this presents a great opportunity for us as data engineers. We will no longer be expected to work in one cloud. We'll get that multi-cloud experience and you can see that demand already starting to hit. And this will only ever increase our salaries and our actual job prospects. Okay guys, that's everything for today. That was the five top data engineering trends as I see them for 2022. Please check out the links in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and until next time, thanks for watching.